Lehman Brothers is going bankrupt, and financial markets from Asia to Europe are doing their utmost to prevent Monday from turning from dark to black. The U.S. government said it won't bail out Lehman, which last week announced more than $3.9 billion in losses. Shares in Lehman Brothers have plummeted more than 80% in 2008 alone. Lehman, like so many other investment banks and banks, uh, really got, quite frankly, caught up in the housing bubble. But like every bubble, the bubble ended, and we're now we're seeing the downside of that bubble. On September the 13th, the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Central Bank, announced a new program of quantitative easing, the creation of money to try and boost the economy. In the long run, critics fear that the effect of expanding the money supply, having more money chasing fewer goods, will be to create inflation. So without QE, the argument is, the money supply will be shrinking very rapidly, just what happened in the 1930s and what led to the Great Depression. To sum up, quantitative easing is a controversial policy and an untested one, but the economist's view is that it's worth a try. The authorities have few other options, and the danger is that if they do not act, the world could fall into a very deep recession. We begin in China, where embattled real estate giant Evergrande faces a major moment of truth this week. The company owes an estimated $300 billion and is expected to default on bond payments, some of which are due this Monday, with more coming on Thursday. Evergrande operates and develops 1,300 real estate projects across China and employs 200,000 people. The company financed its breakneck expansion with credit and bond issues. But the pandemic has paralyzed its operations. Family homes of the future are the bleak monuments to a spectacular business failure. These residential buildings in the city of Luoyang may never be finished. Construction had been moving slowly already. Reports of the impending crisis around Evergrande's gargantuan debt pile brought it to a complete halt. Those who bought apartments here for their families are worried that they will now never be completed. We've been here three times and saw that the construction site and the tower crane have not moved. So we came over to ask and they told us that we had to wait for news. Are you worried when you see negative news about Evergrande? I'm worried. We all bought it ourselves with our hard-earned money. There are unfinished Evergrande projects across China. The company owes at least $300 billion. The crisis is causing panic in Beijing, with fears that a collapse could wreak havoc on the country's financial system. Now we have a lot of layoffs here, and they worry that their wages will not be paid. Although the bosses have said before that layoffs do not affect wages, it's a question of how much time before they get paid after being laid off. something that's going to be happening in and around the month of September. The first vision I saw was on December 20th, and I've written this down, so I'm going to be reading a lot, but I saw bunches of bananas growing on a tree upside down. And if you didn't know this about bananas, they actually grow upside down. 
the Lord knew that I would know what this was referring to because the first time I ever saw bananas growing in uh, on a tree was actually when I visited Mexico. This is what I heard. As soon as I saw that, I heard the Holy Spirit say, Mexico is on fire. Mexico is on fire. Now, this was back in December, okay? And while I was hearing this, I started to, and I've written this down, I started to feel very intense heat. And I heard, it's the fire of my spirit. The next thing I heard was, it's spreading from coast to coast. I got to talk to my grandma. She actually began to tell me about some of the things because it's her sister um, that, uh, that lives in Mexico. And she started to tell me about some of the things that were happening at their church. And uh, they were, specifically what she said was th that they were experiencing the powerful presence of God falling. So that was a confirmation for me. Then uh, a month later, on January 30th, I heard the Holy Spirit again start speaking about Mexico. And he said, my spirit is moving across Mexico. Then I heard him say, I'm moving in waves. So back in 2020, I believe that could be uh, one of the waves he's talking about, what was happening then, even earlier this year. I believe what's going to happen in September is going to be another wave. Okay. And then he said, I'm moving in waves. Catch them. Catch them. Now I believe he's not just talking about Mexico. He's not just talking about the believers there, the churches there. He's talking about us. Because the next thing he said was, this is not restricted. He said, just concentrated. And then he said, bananas are exported. Bananas are exported. Agents at the U.S. border with Mexico have begun moving thousands of Haitian migrants sheltering under a bridge in the Texas town of Del Rio. And then he said, it will burn for my glory. Joey, the heat there in South Texas is extreme. We're talking about triple digits. Have there been any health concerns with these migrants? 15,000 essentially camping out outside under a bridge? Yes, absolutely. You know, uh, yesterday at the heat index uh, was about uh, 104, maybe 105 degrees. And then I heard the same way a forest fire spreads through the wind and burns in patches. This fire will start in Mexico and spread to many places across the globe. And from what we've heard, some of these people have been in Mexico or in Central America or in Latin America for years. This massive amount of people, they are all people hoping to get asylum within the U.S. The majority are from Haiti. He gives a prophecy of the end times. He's the first one. He says that, first of all, the Jewish people are going to be scattered to the ends of the earth, wander from nation to nation. But then he said, in the last days, God is going to gather the Jewish people back to the land of Israel. It's going to be a sign of the last days. It's a central event of prophecy. The nation of Israel will be resurrected from the dead. And then... God is going to take what was hopeless and he's going to begin restoring, re redeeming, bringing back and resurrecting the land and the nation of Israel. Prophecy that Moses gave that the stranger shall come to the land. Exactly what he is doing at that exact moment. You know, the Jewish people have been praying for 2,000 years, set prayers that said, God, bring us back to the land. But what they said is, Lord, hear our prayer. They kept saying, hear our prayer and have mercy on us. Hear our prayer, have mercy. It sets all things in motion. Things begin to, to turn in the prophetic world that are going to bring Israel back into the world. Now, God gave a law to Israel, the law of the Jubilee. The Jubilee is this. If you lost your land, you lost your home, you lost your ancestral possession, in the year of Jubilee, the trumpet shall sound, and you, whatever you lost, you get it back. You lost whatever you have, you have been, has been taken out of your life, you get it back. You return home. It's the year of coming back, coming home, getting restored. Also, it's the year that if you have been in bondage or slavery, when you hear the trumpet sound, you shake off the chains, you rise up, and you, get back, you come back into your possession. And if you come back to your land and there's somebody on your land, by the year of Jubilee, but you say, you have to get off my land. This is my possession. I'm coming home. This is the year of Jubilee. Now, the year of Jubilee comes once every 50 years. It's the 50th year. Could the mystery of Israel's restoration be linked to the mystery of the Jubilee? Well, no nation has ever lost their land or their home or their ancestral possessions as the Jewish people have. But so if they should return in the last days, it'll be a prophetic Jubilee. It says to the Jewish people, 
you, in Jubilee, you shall return. Everyone shall return to the land. Jubilee. You shall return. In Hebrew, the word for you shall return is actually one word. It's the word tashuvu. Now, I know you may not know Hebrew, but try it. Tashuvu. Tashuvu means you shall return. One word. So that's the first time God told the whole nation, you shall return. This is...